Hey everyone, welcome. This is Zeb. In this video, I want to look at the consumer optimization problem with Cobb Douglas style preferences or Cobb Douglas utility function. So, a Cobb Douglas utility function is any kind of utility function that takes this uh, form, namely that the utility, which depends on how much of good one we consume, how much of good two we consume, is going to be some multiplication of the amounts of good one and the amount of good two, possibly scaled by some factor a and possibly raised to some exponent each uh, a and b. So any kind of utility function that takes this form is Cobb Douglas. So for instance, if we had x1, x2 was our utility function, this would be a Cobb Douglas utility function. If we had 2x1, x2, this would be a Cobb Douglas utility function. If we had 2x1, x2 to the 1 half, this would be a Cobb Douglas utility function as well. So that's just something to keep in mind, these various forms of the Cobb Douglas utility function. So let's think about what the consumer's optimization problem here is. It's going to be the same as usual, namely that they want to maximize their utility function by choosing the correct amounts of good one and good two such that they optimize that utility or maximize that utility given their constraint and the constraint is the budget constraint that we are familiar with so that is p1 x1 the amount spent on good one plus p2 x2 the amount spent on good two is going to be less than or equal to m but in this case we will assume that a and we will assume that big A, little a, uh, and b are all strictly positive real numbers. So we'll assume all of these um, are strictly, let's put another plus there, strictly positive real numbers. So we know that these preferences are monotonic. And so we know for that reason that this is going to be a strict equality. I don't know why I keep resizing here. So that's going to be a strict equality. So let's think about what the indifference curves might look like for this. So here we'll plot this out. We've got x1 on the horizontal, x2 on the vertical. We can draw our budget line in red. This is going to be m over p1. This is how much I can buy um, of good one if I only buy good one. Here is M over P2. This is how much I can buy of good two if I only buy good two. And now we've got our optimal consumption bundle is going to be the one such that our indifference curve is tangent to that budget constraint. And the reason why this is optimal is because we could consume some other, we'll call this I2, we could consume some other bundle that's affordable and, and it completely exhausts our income, but they give us a lower indifferent, a lower, lower utility level than does this bundle. So this is going to be the optimal consumption bundle, and we will designate the optimal amount of good one as x1 star and the optimal amount of good two as x2 star. So this is going to be our optimal consumption bundle x star. Now in this video, I will talk about how we find x star using the non-calculus version, using the marginal rate of substitution and the slope of the budget line. So let's think about what you can see at this uh, point x star. Well, the slope of our indifference curve is the same here as the slope of our budget line. So at this point, the slope of the indifference curve is exactly equal to the slope of the budget line. Well, the slope of the indifference curve, so the slope of the indifference curve, remember, is the marginal rate of substitution, and the slope of the budget line is going to be negative P1 over P2. So at this point, right, so we can say at x star, it must be the case that our marginal rate of substitution is equal to negative p1 over p2. So we can use that fact to help us find the optimal 
consumption bundle here. So in order to do that, we need to calculate the marginal rate of substitution. So let's do that. Remember, the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the negative of the marginal utility of good one divided by the marginal utility of good two. So now we need to just uh, find those. So let's move this up a little bit. So our marginal utility of good one is going to be the derivative of our utility function. So let me rewrite the utility function here is equal to a x one a x two b. So our marginal utility is going to just be for good one a times little a times x one to the a minus one x two b. And our marginal utility for good two, right? We're just going to take the derivative of our utility function with respect to x two, and so we get a little b x one a x two b minus one. So here we have it. Now for our marginal rate of substitution, we need to simply divide these. So the marginal rate of substitution is going to be the negative of a a x1 a minus 1 x2 b over a b x1 a x2 b minus 1. Now here we need to use some rules of exponents to help make our life simpler. Well we can hopefully see that the a's cancel out. All right? If we have an a in the numerator and the denominator, that's going to cancel out. Now we can also use the fact that this in the uh, that this x one a here is one power higher than this, and we can also see that this x two b is one power higher than this. So any time that you are dealing with this, you just simply uh, subtract the exponents anytime that you're dividing these things. So you subtract the exponents. So we can simplify this down and we get that this is a over b times, and so this x1 a minus 1 divided by x1 a is just going to leave us with an x1 in the denominator, and this x2 b divided by x2 b minus 1 is going to leave us with an x2 in the numerator. So there's our marginal rate of substitution, except we've got to have that minus sign. So that was a little bit of work, but now we wound up with something that looks kind of manageable. So let's move this on up. So remember then that our marginal rate of substitution has to be equal to the slope of the budget line. So we get then that a in in equilibrium or at that q at that x star negative a over b times x2 over x1 is going to be equal to negative p1 over p2 or a over b x2 x1 is equal to just p1 over p2 all right so there we have it now what we need to do is we need to just solve for one of the goods or the other. So uh, let's just go ahead and solve for x2. So we can multiply here um, both sides. Well, so we, we can multiply both sides by x1. And if we do, we get a over b x2 equals p1 over p2 x1 so we can do that and now we can divide by a over b and so if we divide by a over b whoops my left hand likes to hit the zoom button then we get that x2 is equal to p1 over p2 over a over b now we could simplify that but we'll leave it for the time being as it is times x1. So there we have that. Now, 
This doesn't really tell us a lot, but we're getting somewhere. What we need to do is take this result and put it into our budget line. So remember, our budget line, P1X1 plus P2X2 is equal to M. Well, now we have an X2 in terms of X1. So we can rewrite, let's shift this up. We'll bring this over here, that's gonna be useful to us. So we can rewrite our budget line as P1X1 plus P2, and now use this result for our X2, P1 over P2 over A over B times X1 is going to be equal to M. Now that doesn't look very pretty, but realize that this P2 and that P2 are going to uh, cancel each other out. Multiplying and then dividing by the same thing is essentially has no effect. Right? And so we're left with P1X1 plus P1 divided by A over B X1 equals M. Well, of course, anytime you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is going to be P1X1 plus P1 times B over A X1 equals M. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's move this on up. Let me move some other stuff up out of our way. Okay. Now we can solve for that optimal x1. So let's factor out this x1 because we've got an x1 here and we've got an x1 here. So let's bring it out. So we get x1 times p1 plus b over a p1 is equal to m. So we can divide and we get x1. That is our optimal amount. That's our consumption bundle. Um, is going to be M, our income, divided by P1 plus B over A, P1. Now, you could leave it like that, and that's okay if you, if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, or we can take this a little bit further. Uh, we can factor out this P1 here, and we can rewrite this as M over... P1 times 1 plus B over A, All right? So we can write it that way. And then we can write it as M over P1 times 1 over 1 plus B over A. And if you know your rules about fractions, then you probably know, let's move this up out of the way and that with it, then you probably know that this is the same as M over P1 times, now this is going to be A over A plus B. So those are exactly the same thing. So this solution here that I said was acceptable, if you wanted to leave it like that, is exactly the same as this. But this is, the gen this is kind of the way that we usually like to write it. And there's a reason for that, and that's because the A's and the B's tell us something about the percentage of our income that we will want to spend on uh, those goods. So that's one of the reasons why we write it that way, because this fraction over here on the right-hand side is going to tell us the percentage of our income that we should want to spend on this good. So Solving for the optimal amount of good two is exactly the same, and you can go through the same steps if you want to, or you can just realize that this is a kind of symmetric problem, and we can just easily switch the numbers of the variables and the, the A's and the B's. And so if this is our X1 star, right, let's make some more room again, move some stuff out of the way. If this is our X1 star, then hopefully you can see that x2 star, let's switch back to white, x2 star is going to be m over now p2 times, and instead of a, we've got b over a plus b. 
So this leaves us with the optimal consumption bundle X star equal to M over P1 times A over A plus B. That's the amount of good one that we want to buy. And the amount of good two that we're going to want to buy is going to be M over P2 times B over A plus B. So that's a nice uh, easy trick you can use at the end to save you some work that once you've solved for one of these, you know the other one. It's just going to be the uh, analogous, right? We just switched the A's and the B's and the, we switched the parameters essentially. So there you have it. That's the optimal consumption bundle. Uh, we may be able to go back and find um, this. Yeah, let's take a look at this um, indifference curve here. So what we see then is that this x1 star, this is going to be m over p1 times a over a plus b. All right now in a real problem you might have some actual numbers here, but we're going to leave it generic. And for x2 star, for x2 star you've got m over p2 times b over a plus B. So there you have it, the solved consumer choice problem for the Cobb-Douglas style utility function. Thanks for watching.